Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today with a scrappy quilt that I just recently finished. It has been my goal for 2023 to make several scrappy quilts throughout the year, and this is the first one I've completed. I think my next one will probably be an orphan block scrappy quilt, and you can see more about that if you look at my January works in progress. But today I'm going to share all about this scrappy quilt. And I'm going to do something a little bit different because we actually filmed this during a couple of different days. So I can kind of walk you through my process for choosing the fabrics and why I chose what I chose. And we weren't actually sure at the beginning if we were going to have this back from the quilter in time to share it for this video, but we do. It's not bound yet, but I do have it here. You might remember that last year I did a small project every month on the blog. And this year I plan to kind of continue that, but with a twist. Occasionally there will be bigger projects to go along with my goal of making some scrap quilts and projects. So we'll still have occasional small projects, but then we'll also have some medium size. And like today's project is actually a pretty good size quilt. So this is the first in that series. I know it's February 1st, and this is kind of technically my, my January project. I got it mostly all put together during the month of January. So we'll move right into the video. A couple of the portions were pre-recorded, and then I'll stop back in at the end. And also want to mention that this is a free PDF pattern you can get from my blog. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I just want to go over my fabric pull with you before I get started. We're actually filming this a little bit early so I can just talk to you a little bit about my process for scrap quilts. When I started thinking about what I wanted for this scrap quilt, I actually started with my backgrounds. A lot of our fabric, well, all of our fabric collections now use a more white tone for the background fabrics than they do in ivory like they used to. And so I wanted to just kind of use a lot of those ivory toned fabrics that I had in my stash that we, some of them are from quite early collections. And so I started by gathering my, my low volume backgrounds. And these are going to be for alternate squares in the quilt. And so you're going to actually need, okay, you're actually gonna need 57 of these squares. And so what I did was I can get six squares from a strip. So I cut 10 strips, that'll give me 60 squares total and I'll just choose 57. So I went there, I, that's how I started. Now these squares and these prints are actually gonna make the hourglass parts of the scrap quilt. And so what I decided is that I wanted, I didn't want a lot of busyness in the background for those blocks. So I have a tone on tone that goes with all of the prints that I chose. It's an, a floral with an ivory background. And so I cut those squares out. And for those, you're going to actually need 36 of those squares. And you're also going to need 36 squares that are mediums, darks, uh, just a contrast. And so at first I thought I was gonna choose 12 fabrics and cut three from each. And then I just, my, my pile kept growing. And so I actually ended up with 36 different fabrics and I am just gonna cut one square from each. And those will be sewn together with these to make the hourglass portions. And I, these were all cut from little odds and ends and bolts I had. I made sure to include one piece of fabric that was from our very first fabric collection, Bright Sun. But I also included, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, this one from our most recent Favorite Things collection. Even though it is mostly holiday, it, the greens just work beautifully. So I've got, I don't think I have every collection 
here, although I might, I, I might have to go through and look, but I've got almost every collection represented in this scrap quilt. And like I said, I am just gonna cut a square from each of these. And I had to add in some fat eights to get my number up to 36 that weren't. And so these are all unique prints. But what I'm trying to also point out here is that you don't have to make them unique. You could choose 12 different prints and cut three squares from each, but you'll need 36 squares to go along with these 36 squares. Now there is one more part of this quilt that I don't have my fabrics here for yet, but those are the fabrics to make the nine patch blocks. And you can either use charm squares or mini charms or leftover jelly roll strips for that. And I'm actually going to make these hourglass units and just kind of do a little playing around before I decide on what fabrics I am going to use for the nine patches. So the next time you see this, I will probably have the quilt all in one piece and I'll just kind of point out what I did with those nine patches. Okay, so earlier I showed you a lot of my fabric selections and now I want to show you, now that I've done quite a bit of the sewing, so uh, I've cut all of my low volume fabrics into the squares. And so these are ready to go. And I actually went through and I put them in, a, in order so that I've got them, no two are the same that are next to each other. So that when I go to put them in the quilt, they're already kind of, uh, you know, organized so that I'm not gonna have the same fabric touching. I shouldn't anyway. And then I also went ahead and sewed all of my quarter square triangles. And I had showed you this rainbow of fabrics and did decide for sure to use the tone on tone just so that it wouldn't get too busy since I'm using pretty busy prints for these alternate blocks. So all of these quarter square triangles have been sewn and trimmed. And what I did was I kind of mixed up the prints on most of them. I would use two different grays or dark grays or two different light grays. And so I pretty much did that all the way through. There were a couple that I didn't have more than one square of that color. And so I, uh, those are the same. I'll show you one of those in a minute here, but aquas, navy, I just really think, and I think I'm gonna just mix these all up in the quilt when I start putting them in. So it's not gonna be in a rainbow order. It's just gonna be very scrappy. So greens and yellows. Uh, here's one of the blocks that I didn't have, another orange that I wanted to put with it. So I just have two blocks and they both use the same fabric. But corals, pinks, and that was another one that I just used by itself. But most of them are pretty scrappy. So all of these are done, all of these are ready to go. The last thing I have left to do are the nine patch blocks. And I actually found four of these in my orphan block bin from previous projects that never got used. So I've just got these, I'm gonna make the rest of my nine patches and then I am going to put it all together and yeah, just really, really excited about this great way to use up so many of my scraps that have just been sitting around. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't really sure if we would get this to the quilter and back from the quilter in time to give you a look at it, but I did. It's, it's not bound, but just wanna point out a few things for you to keep in mind. Uh, here are a couple of the nine patch blocks. This one was actually in my orphan block stash, as were a few others. That was really fun. And then I made a few just with scraps that I had in my scrap bin to go along. Pay really close attention when you lay this out and follow the instructions. Some of the rows just have the quarter square triangles with the solid squares. Some of the rows have all three blocks, the solid squares, quarter square triangles, and then nine patches. And there are actually two different ways that the nine patches are put into the quilt. And it does kind of, there are some overall secondary patterns that you'll see when you put it together, but just be careful with placement. You kind of have to really look at the PDF and place everything, you know, keep track of which row you're laying out and place everything in the correct direction. But I'm super happy with how this turned out. I can't wait to get it bound 
and really happy that my friend Vicki was able to quilt this for me on very short notice right before she left town and just really hope you'll enjoy making this. The PDF pattern is over on the blog. Okay, so that's it with this. I'm calling it my grandma's scrap quilt since it was actually inspired by a scrap quilt that my grandmother did. And you can go to the blog and get the free PDF pattern download. I hope that you'll enjoy making this. It, while it is a scrap buster quilt, it seems like I still have lots of scraps in my stash. So plenty more for my other scrap quilt projects during the year. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.